Hey there, how's it going? It's your host Andrew and the audio guy Josh from Blocks and Talks, where we discuss about the world of Lego. From reviews of the latest sets to discussions about the hobby itself and even trending news within the community. In the next series of our Lego history of, we're going back to 1989 with Lego Pirates. I'm joined by my good friend James, who is very knowledgeable in all Lego Pirates lore as we go through this trailblazing theme that basically set the way Lego is today. Hope you enjoy. So after the success of the Spider-Man theme, I think Josh and I think this will be a nice little series going forward where we just make histories of all sorts of Lego themes. So this time we're doing the very rich and detailed Lego Pirates. I'm joined here by my friend James. James is a huge expert on Lego Pirates and all the lore around it. So he's going to be our guide throughout this very long series. So how are you doing, James? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Not too bad, just talking about what I love and just having fun with it. Alrighty, so just to give a little background. So in today's world, we see all of like the retro themes of Lego Space, Lego Castle, Lego City is always around, but Lego Pirates is generally unnoticed. And something interesting is that Lego Pirates is honestly one of the biggest like trailblazers and foundations for how Lego is structured today. And it all came back down to 1989. Created by a small team led by designer, and sorry if I butcher his name, Niels Milan Peterson, Lego Pirates was the company's fifth theme, technically fourth if you count Lego Fabuland, and the ones preceding it were Lego Castle, Space, Town. So here was joining a, a bunch of new blossoming themes, and yeah, there were a ton of new pieces and types of things developed for it. And before I go on, I just want to see, like, James, you want to just give us a background, like the whole lore of pirates? Yeah, so here we are joined with our protagonist or antagonist, depending on who you decide to play with as a kid, um, Captain Redbeard and his pirate crew. And at least in the 1989 wave, we got that Black Seas Barracuda, which was his flagship. And he was going against the Blue Coat soldiers, which were heavily inspired by the French during the 18th century. And if you actually look closely, their flag has a fleur de lis on it, four of them in each corner. And it's actually very similar to the flag of Quebec. Um, so I can guarantee that's where they got the idea from. And the fact that the French were very prominent makes me think it's set during the Seven Years' War, realistically. Um, Lore-wise, with the actual theme itself, though, what we know from the comic book is that they're going after a buried treasure. Um, that they believe is theirs, that has Spanish doubloons, um, the pirates believe is theirs. And uh, the Blue Coats are trying to get it for selfish reasons, as Governor Broadside, who is the leader of the Blue Coats, um, is a very greedy monarch, if you will. Yeah, so it's not directly historically based, like it's never explicitly stated, but it kind of is like inferred in. It's like heavily implied, basically, based on like uniforms some little lore bits and stuff. And, you know, with this new theme, it was going to come a lot of really cool things. As I mentioned before, there's a ton of new uh, trailblazing and breaking things, such as uh, Lego piece and um, helmet design, or not helmet, headpiece designs, where previously you'd always get the traditional Lego smiley face. But now it, with this Pirates theme, you got all sorts of things. You got Pirates with like eye patches, Pirates with like beards all sorts of different like designs to give different facial expressions and looks. And it really revolutionized the minifigure because before that, the only way you really would identify a minifigure was by the uniform it wore or like the little accessories it wore. So this like kind of set the way for more characterization, customization. And to build on that like world building, there are also a ton of new parts to match with it. We got custom weaponry such as um, flintlock pistols, muskets, cannons for like the armaments and then even animals like parrots sharks monkeys and cloth seals for the ship so lego really went all out adding tons of very new pieces to really bring to life all of this and i'm sure james like as a pirate fan you know like they came with all sorts of things that i think that would even hold its ground in terms of detail design today right I believe all the sets actually hold the ground very well today. The only set which is a very unpopular opinion is the Black Seed Barracuda. I feel like that one has aged for sure. But the rest of them I do believe hold the ground. 
Yeah. And Lego really tried to push this as like its first like guided narrative per se. And what I mean by that is with castles, cities, space and stuff beforehand, you would have like suggested line, like things to do with them. Like you had like a castle faction and stuff like that, or you would have a city building or a spaceship doing space thingies. But here with pirates, Lego tried to like make their own lore and have like kids follow along. So they tried to establish like a solid narrative and encourage a lot of role playing. So they added all these type of things like personalities for the figures through like little comic books and lore bits or just like through their facial expressions. And as we'll um, talk about later, they actually did release like comic books to coincide with the pirates theme. And um, I think exclusive to the United States, you can correct me on that. But the box had little flaps where when you opened it, there would be like little paragraphs of text, like kind of set up and get the narrative running for like kids imagination. Is that so? Yes, that is correct. I do believe it might have been European. However, I'm not sure. Um, I'm, let's just say United States, but I'm not entirely sure on that. But yeah, they all had the little lore inside and it was just really cool because you could open that flap in a store and be able to get your whole imagination going before you even take it home. I think that's amazing. Yeah, it was kind of like the appetizer, whereas before it was purely a child's imagination. This time, Lego kind of like drew it up for you. And from there, you could like basically have whatever turns out, turns out. And it's in a way, you could kind of think of it as like Lego licensed Steam before it actually came out because it gave you an established story and it was up to you to finish it. And... Yeah, without further ado, why don't we just jump into the sets from 1989, where it all started. So we first started with Buried Treasure, set 6235. It's a nice small, what would be a poly bag today, and it introduces you to the theme if you were a little unsure. You get a happy pirate, <laughs> and you get the flag, you get two sets of four, so eight gold, chrome gold um, coins. Oh, amazingly. And it gets the suggestion of a buried treasure, but not entirely. And then, of course, you get the monkey, the shovel, the flintlock, pistol, and the cutlass. It's just a great little introduction to the theme. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, it's a predecessor to today's poly bags. Came with 20 pieces, the one minifigure. Retailed for $325 US dollars, which would set you around 16 price per piece. 16 cents price per piece, sorry. And... Yeah, like you said, very basic set, just like a little base plate, a chest, monkey with sword, pirate. It was basically like a little taste of everything. It gave you um, just an idea of like what aesthetic to expect. Nothing crazy, a little addition. And as you can see by the uh, resale price, there definitely is a lot of hype for this. I think the used price isn't that crazy because, you know, it's nothing special, just $13. But new, it's like $140. So... There it is, you know, just like the Spider-Man sets before, new and used. Definitely more expensive, but the new is definitely where it's at. And one thing I want to mention before we change to the next set is you notice those yellow plates. And it's because Lego didn't actually have tan in their color palette at the time, which I actually like. I don't use it in my mocks today. I do use the tan just because it's more realistic. But it, the yellow just has a charm to it that you can't beat with any other color it's amazing wow i actually did not know that so okay so before they had like true sand color they just used yellow and you just imagine it's like golden sands yeah and it just kind of gives that whole fantasy feel that you want from a fantasy pirate theme it's just great yeah and i think the box art honestly reflects it too because it's not just a plain set on a blank background you you have like the set resting on a Looks like a model sand island. You got some water all around it, some palm trees, and like the silhouette of a fortress in the back. So everything about it, Lego really wants to push this like immersive feeling where it doesn't matter how big or small of a set you get, like it's going to put you in the storyline and really make you feel like this set is part of that world, which is fantastic by them. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's such a step up from the castle design. I think the castle backgrounds are incredible. But they'll, you got to admit, they're very plain in colors. So when Pirates was introduced with all these vivid colors and detailed backgrounds, it was pretty incredible. And it's definitely held up today as you see people on Instagram and all other socials that they still try to mimic that background in their photography. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the next set we go to is actually one of my favorites, strangely enough, and that is Harbor Century. It's a very small set. It's a robo with a blue coat soldier and a cannon on it, which is very unrealistic, having a giant cannon on a tiny rowboat. If that thing actually fired, the whole rowboat would tip over. Um, but I just love this set because you get an exclusive blue coat, nothing actually exclusive, but just the combination of pieces. Having a blue coat with a plain, non-printed bike one, it's just really cool. And just like the pirate set beforehand, it introduces you to the theme, but more the imperial side of things, which I just really like. Yeah, it's like the opposite end of the poly bags. Came with 25 pieces, the one minifigure, as you said. Actually retailed a little more, 425 US dollars, which would set you a 17 cents price per piece. Its used price is around $15, new, like 120 ish. And yeah, like you said, it's a little unrealistic because if that cannon shot, like you're, you're tipping over. But it, at the same time, it introduces a really cool and interesting mechanic where there's a whole new realm of playability, which is the cannon. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the cannon could be loaded with pieces and couldn't be shot. Like it can actually launch the, the little pieces. Yes, only in Europe, however. So it shot one by one round black cylinders to represent cannonballs. However, the United States did not have the actual firing cannon. I don't know the exact detail, so I'm not even going to try to say why, but they didn't have it. So their cannon was called a transitional cannon, where they were still making a new mold that wasn't able to fire, but it, the, the one in the United States couldn't fire. So it was a little bit different cannon. It had the the little peg on the inside you see that's supposed to hold the cylinder, but it had a black end to it that you couldn't pull back compared to the European version that we consider standard today that actually is gray on the back and you can pull it back and fire the cannon. Yeah, and I think I remember watching an older documentary on like American toys from back then. I think there's something that had to do with like BB guns and like launching like spinning blade stuff, but there was like some law that came along with it where too many kids would like get eyes poked or like injured and stuff because there wasn't that like that like standard warning you see today with like the cross sign and like the projectile hitting the kids like warning shoots projectile or something. So I think this was around mm -hmm. the time the American government was still cautious around that. And yeah, I think like it was just playing it safe. I just love when you compare that statement to today when you get new Star Wars ships and stuff to have. You know, spring-loaded shooters and the stormtroopers have the stud shooters. It's just everything fires compared yeah. to how it was back then. Because the laws actually did change afterwards. I think, like, instead they instead just mandated that you add, like, a little warning beforehand, which is why you see that big bold thing on, like, the box and the magazine. Or no, not magazine, the instruction pamphlet. Like, careful, this thing can shoot and hit you. And if it's not clear already with, like, the minifigure designs, the... The aesthetic and storytelling and even like the the canon like there's a lot of predecessors in this thing like the canon can be argued as like the the grandfather of like flick fire missiles stud shooters spring loaded shooter like just anything you can imagine this is like where it all started and it's crazy that like pirates really did like set the the tone and standard for today yet yeah, is largely unforgot like largely forgotten and kind of cast aside in a way it was definitely, people almost treat it like a sub-theme and not its own major theme. And I think it's right up there, castle, space, and town. It introduced all those new modes that we're so used to today. For example, in this set, that beautiful red rowboat is the first time we're seeing this piece. Um, we do see it in the old brown color as well. But um, the Imperials always use the red, and the boat can actually float compared to the major ships we see later. But... It's just a beautiful piece, and they use a similar mold today. I think it is slightly different, but it looks the exact same for what it's worth. Hmm. Um, the next set we go to is more of a battle pack. It's the first battle pack, if I'm correct. There might have been a castle one yeah, before. Yeah, there were castle ones um, before. So, the first pirate battle okay. pack, we'll say. So, yeah, first pirate battle pack, and you got three pirates, including... The protagonist captain, the main character, which is pretty cool to get in a small set like this. And you get the female pirate, which, you know, it wasn't, wasn't too gender inclusive back in the day, but at least there was a female pirate. And I'm glad they did throw her in 
this set at least and not just one big set we see later on and it's nice you get two blue coats even if one is a soldier and one's an officer it's just a great way to build up your army yeah it's a very standard set just five minifigures you get a loot chest and it's cool because like beforehand with female figures the only way you could identify them as female is like the hair piece so now that when you got like lipstick on their face and um like their dress or suggest that like they're females like there's more identifying features you know it's just a beautiful figure and yeah once again going over the whole pirate theme as a whole like printing on faces it really was a game changer for everything yeah and came with 33 pieces pretty much all of which are minifigures came with five minifigures retail for six dollars and fifty cents imagine that in today's like star wars terms for a battle pack put you around 20 cents uh, price per piece used around 37 dollars new almost 300 so good luck getting one new here josh um the huh? next set we're actually sorry uh What's that? wait josh how are we doing on time uh, yeah can you just pull up a timer i just want to get an eye while we're at it all right perfect all right sorry yeah let's keep chugging along you good um, the next set we're introduced to is Castaway's Raft. It is the first substantial build we get in this series, and it is a great one. I love it because, once again, this was a new theme, so they didn't have all the parts accessible to them as we do now. So them trying to build a Castaway's Raft, it turned out amazing. You're using the barrel pieces to represent wood logs at the end, even though it's kind of funny because the rest of it's made of black. So it just kind of makes no sense when you have brown at the ends but black in the middle. I just love how they did the tattered sail. You know, instead of making a new cloth piece, they decided to go the cheaper route and just use plain white flags. But it works so beautifully. Yeah, it's just like white flags on uh, brown lances. Very simple. Everything here is purely brick built. There's no like crazy reliance on molded pieces. Came with three figures and uh, I think the first molded shark ever, which is really, really yep. cool. And yeah, came with 54 pieces. Um, retail for eight dollars fifty cents. Put you around fifteen and a half price per piece. Uh, fifteen and a half cents price per piece. Um, used will cost you around twenty, while new will be two hundred. Pretty basic set, I would say. And like you said, it's the first set that would, I would say, breaks the poly bag. Um, distinction is more of like a really tiny set instead. And this one can just you can put it anywhere. You know, you don't have to have the pirate fort to go with this. You don't have to have, um. The Imperial for it just it works anywhere you put it. It's just a beautiful set, and I believe it's a great desk piece in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. But the next one is very special, and this is Shipwreck Island. This set is the first one to introduce that beautifully printed faceplate. It's 16 studs by 16 studs, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. You get the palm tree element the first time, you get the monkey for the first time. And of course, you get the treasure chest. Oh, no, sorry, not the monkey the first time. You did get it previously, but the monkey is still a great inclusion. You get the treasure chest with gold coins. You get another cannon. You get a parrot, a pirate flag. It's almost every single thing you need as an accessory into your pirate display. Oh, yeah, 100%. And um, it's kind of hard to see because all the bricks are on top, but this isn't an ordinary 16 by 16 blue base plate either. It looks like the middle part, there actually is like a separately printed part in the middle that is meant to represent an island with like the sand in the green, if I'm seeing correctly. Yep. Yeah, so it is an island. It's kind of like an L shape. It actually, funny enough, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but the Lego idea is Ray the Castaway that came out last year as a promo. That island shape actually mimics this pretty well. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it's pretty close comparison. Yeah, and um, yeah, it just came with like almost like a shipwreck structure canon pretty much everything essential and i think a theme you're going to notice throughout all these sets is that every set can function independently like each one will simply add to the world you don't like you don't necessarily need every set to have a full world each one rather just builds on top of each other and enriches the world with its own unique thing there's not really any copycats everything will give you a different route and alley to like expand your world per se it's just absolutely gorgeous. I do love the suggestion of a shipwreck island, you know, having the cannon that washed up the shore and they just kind of built a tiny shelter of whatever they could from whatever shipwreck occurred, which I just love. 
Yeah. And this little guy came with 71 pieces, two minifigs, retail for $12, put you around 17 cents price per piece. Used value, roughly $30, new, like 285 Generally, all these like tiny sets are around the same. The used price seems pretty standard because in today's like standards, these sets are like in use. They're definitely going to be beat up and stuff since they're from the 80s. And new, obviously, because there's not going to be a lot of them in their boxes anymore. Um, the next set, this one has strangely gone up a lot in price. If you look at that used price, it doesn't quite look like worth it. And it used to not be that expensive. So it's kind of interesting that this one jumps so much. But it's Saber Island, and it uses the exact same printed base plate as we saw above with the Shipwreck Island. But this one's just gorgeous. It has the yellow. It's the first time we're seeing an imperial structure. And you can see how they do the color scheme. They have the printed wall panels that used to be exclusive to Castle. But they have like a red brick texture showing that's kind of wear and tear on the paint or whatever material was used on the outside during that time period. We also see the yellow highlights, which just makes the thing pop. It feels Caribbean. It's just, it's such a peaceful, good vibe. And you get the palm tree again. You get three blue coats total, two soldiers and an officer. You get the cannon once again. And you get the big blue coat flag, which that piece is actually pretty rare and hard to find now just because the clips broke off pretty easy. So if you do get one with clips, it is quite expensive. But this is just a perfect side piece set. It goes great with the fortress we will look at later on. It's it's just good. I can't say one bad thing about it. Oh, hundred percent. This set, like like you said, it it adds a lot of character because there's it's um as you'll see with a lot of the sets from this era, it's like the consistent color scheme you'll see with fortresses and such is white and yellow with like that red brick poke underneath to show like the weathering from the sea. And it's not a boring plain structure like the previous like town and castle buildings where it's like one monotone color. Instead, you're getting like different text, like suggestions of like an early suggestion of different textures showing the elements definitely worn down and that this is like an ongoing kind of conflict. And yeah, just so much play possibilities with these kind of things. And as such, the numbers we're looking at 96 pieces. Three figures, as mentioned before, retailed for $15.50, which would put you around $0.16 cents price per piece. And I, like you said, the used price is actually $50 and new around $300. So a little pricier, but I mean, if you have nothing bad to say about it, I think it can somewhat be justified. I believe this is a great introduction set to the theme. If you're looking for one set to buy nowadays, I do believe this is the one. It's just perfect. It gives you the island base plate. It gives you those blue coat soldiers, which is just so nostalgic. It's a beautiful set. And with the remaining sets of the 1989 line, we're going to see some of the biggest, baddest, and most iconic sets of the entire LEGO Pirates theme. Be sure to check out next episode as we go over them and what came with these hefty price points. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Blocks and Talks, and enjoy. See you next time.